Hi, so in this video, we're gonna see the laptop motherboard SMD components and other mount surface components. So we will begin with the ceramic capacitors. As you can see here, all these are ceramic capacitors or PF capacitors, as you can see. Okay, so in every circuit, we find like this capacitors. So this capacitors is for a filtering as you can see okay here as you can see around this ic's we have ceramic capacitors as you can see also here so all these are ceramic capacitors of course you can use the ceramic capacitors to know whether the ic is good or not because if you find any shorter capacitor to the ground in both sides means the ic is bad okay so as you can see also here in the ram chip here we have capacitors so this is where you can check the main power for the random access memory or for the ram so if this kind of ram is ddr2 so if you check that capacitors you will find 1.8 volt okay here also we have many capacitors this is two big capacitors of course if you want to replace a bad capacitor you should replace it with another capacitor with the same dimension okay so as you can see here many capacitors with different dimensions as you can see here this is the back of the graphic card as you can see we have a lot of ceramic capacitors in the back of the graphic card. So, of course, when you find these capacitors is to filter the power. That's why you will find it in every circuit. Its purpose is a filtering. Here we have a chemical capacitor or polarizer capacitor, as you can see, with plus and minus. Here also we have another ceramic capacitor. Okay, another ceramic capacitor. Also, this is a filtering capacitor, but this kind of capacitor is a polarized capacitor. It has the plus and minus. So always you should pay attention when you should solder or install any chemical capacitor. You should pay attention to the plus and minus. It's not like the ceramic capacitor. Okay? Because the ceramic capacitor doesn't have plus and minus. You can install it or solder it to the motherboard in both directions. Here also, as you can see, those also are polarized capacitors or ceramic capacitors. As you can see, this line means plus. Okay, this is plus and minus okay this is also a chemical capacitor near to the north bridge as you can see here also in this motherboard as you can see we have a yellow capacitor also this is a chemical capacitor as you can see with plus and minus okay so chemical capacitor is a polarizer capacitor but ceramic capacitor or pf capacitor PF means picofarad capacitor is not a polarized capacitor. Here also we have another kind of chemical capacitor, as you can see. A big capacitor. This is also a chemical capacitor with plus and minus. Okay? This kind of capacitor also are polarized capacitors. You should always pay attention to the polarity if you want to install it. Okay? As you can see here, also, we have many chemical capacitors with plus and minus. Always, as you can see, here we have plus and the red part is for minus. Okay? The red color determines the minus terminal. Okay? Of course, over its capacitor, you can find the voltage, its voltage and its capacity. Okay? Like 2.5 volt, 300 90 microfarad etc here also we have other chemical capacitor or polarized capacitor in this motherboard of course i will show you many motherboards in order to go deeper into understanding the laptop motherboard components because the first step 
into laptop repeating is to understand the laptop motherboard components okay this is inductor okay these are inductor or coils okay so this inductor is next to the cpu so each inductor means a channel okay so this is inductor here also we have other types of inductors as you can see a black inductor this is also an um, inductor as you can see okay so all these are inductors and as you know always inductor is connected to the power rail this is a big inductor and over here we have a small inductors as you can see so all these are inductors or coil the reference for inductors is l okay we have here also other kind of inductors as you can see this blue one is an, an inductor okay and here as you can see this is an old inductor so this is an old motherboard as you can see this is also inductors as you can see okay so this is an old inductor always as you can see when you find l the reference l next to any component means that component is an inductor so now we're gonna see another component the bios or basic input output system as you can see so always the bios shape is bigger than the mosfet okay as you can see so this is the bios as you can see so the bios will find always the bios near to the super io and near to the ich okay always these three component the bios the super io and the ich are near to each other in in every motherboard you will find it near to each other here also in this motherboard as you can see we have the bios here next to the ich as you can see okay so the BIOS or basic input output near to the ICH as you can see. Okay. And over here we have the super IO as you can see. Okay. This is the pin number one. Always two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Always this hole means the pin number one. And here also in this motherboard, as you can see, we have the BIOS as you can see here so as you can see here we have the mosfet and here we have the bios always the bios is bigger than the mosfet okay so those are mosfets as you can see so this is mosfet eight pin mosfets as you can see okay exactly the same shape as the bios but the mosfets are smaller than the bios okay so the mosfet contain as you can see this is the pin number one here okay two three four etc always the three pins next do pin number one two three are the source and the other four pins in the other side is the drain okay as you can see this is source and this is the drain okay those are ic's as you can see integrated circuit or power management ic's so in every circuit in the motherboard you will find an ic that is responsible for generating the power for that circuit this is transistor as you can see so here you should pay attention you will find transistor and diodes are the same has the same shape so this is diode here this is diode okay and this is transistor as you can see q and d D means diode and Q means transistor. So you should pay attention. You should never replace a diode with a transistor or a transistor with a diode. As you can see, we have D25 and Q22. So this D means diode and Q is the transistor. There is a big difference. Please pay attention. Here, as you can see, we have D26. So this is diode, as you can see, and here we have q so this is transistors okay the same shape but there is a big difference this is resistors okay this black smt component are resistors this is a normal resistors as you can see okay all these black components are resistors the reference is r and over here as you can see this is resistors but this is a network resistor the network resistor is a combination of many resistors four resistors or five resistors 
So this is an IC, this is a converter, an IC converter that converts one power to another power. So here, as you can see, this is the current sense resistor, as you can see, the current sense resistor, this is the diode, the zener diode, and over here also we have diodes, as you can see. All these are diodes, as you can see. All these are diodes, okay? Here we have, as you can see, transistors. We have Q. Q means transistors. And those are ICs. Basically, this is amplifiers, okay? Those are diodes, not transistors. As you can see, we have D, okay? D, 1012, 1011. Okay, this is resistors, as you can see here. All these are resistors. 